In section 1, we discuss the finite difference method for dimension d equal 1. Now, in section 2, we're going to see how it works for any dimension. So the first thing we need to do is to discuss the mesh. Obviously, in dimension 1, it wasn't an issue. All we had to do was to subdivide the interval. Now, in dimension 2, obviously, or di higher dimensions, we're going to need to discuss this a little bit more in details. As you know, when we do the finite element method, we usually use simplices, so in dimension 2, that will be triangles. Which means that the mesh does not really have a, a, a structure. I mean, you already saw that we're like basically triangles all over, the, all over the places. Now, when we do finite difference method, we kind of like to be able to say, uh, to, to, to have a nice structure of the mesh because we're obviously going to have to go uh, to the right or to the left. And, and, and so it's important to have a mesh that will be uh, that, that will allow us to do this easily. So often we use orthotops, basically rectangles in dimension two. Uh, and, and what will what will happen is that the mesh will follow a pattern structure. What we're going to do is to tessellate our domain omega. We're going to define a structured mesh as a mesh that can be produced by replicating an elementary cell. And if it's not the case, it will be called unstructured. Of course, we would prefer to have a structured mesh when we can, because it will be easier to number the elements of the mesh. And basically, every vertex will be numbered extremely easily with a d-tuple. So uh, ij if you're in dimension 2, ijk if you're in dimension 3. And of course, you can have a numbering system, which will be extremely useful and extremely um, efficient uh, in terms of the what is to come. Uh, let me give you a few examples. If you consider a square here, uh, omega, in, including R2, then you can tessellate this square with j plus 1 square elementary squares. Uh, you basically first subdivide your uh, one, one of the edges in uh, j plus 2 points. So basically, you, you subdivide 0, 1 in, in j plus 2 points. That's on the x-axis. And you do the same on the y-axis. And what happens is that you will have j square points inside of your, of, your, of your square. In other words, boundary not included. And, uh, what, what, and, and these will basically be uh, the unknowns if, say, for instance, you have a directly boundary condition, then uh, that will be uh, something that you will be looking for the solution on the red dot. Now, the points that you have that have two coordinates, i and j, you can number them uh, by saying, for instance, pn will be x, uh, i, y, j. And what happens is that uh, n will be capital J times i minus 1 plus j. So that is a way to number all of the points with only one index, n. Uh, and that's a way to go from, from basically um, two indices to one index and vice versa. So it's not very complicated. As you will see, the final difference method is not complicated, but it just needs to be very precise and not, met too ma not, not make too many mistakes when you are actually doing this kind of things. Uh, you can also have a structured mesh for uh, this domain, for instance. It's a little bit more complicated. And here's what you have in R3. Uh, then obviously you have orthotops, and, and that is another way to mesh a, your, your domain. 